In the previous video, I implemented the basic framework for a CPU cache simulation. In this video, I'm going to build a mechanism for measuring the cache hit rate and then test it on a few different scenarios. In future videos, I want to measure not only hit rate, but other cache statistics as well, like the average memory access time, eviction count, or categorize misses by their type. That's why I'll create a cache statistics class and put the needed cache access data in it. In this cache statistics class, I need two variables, a uint32 called cache accesses, which counts the total number of times the cache was accessed, and another uint32 called cache hits, which counts the number of cache hits. To get the cache hit rate, I'll create a new method called getHitRate. This method returns the cache hit rate in the form of a floating point number between 0 and 1. To calculate the hit rate, I simply divide the number of hits by the total number of cache accesses. Since both of the division operands are integers, I must convert at least one of them to a float. Otherwise, I'll always get an integer as a result, which can be either a 0 or a 1. The main cache class will have an instance of the cache statistics class as its private member. Now it's time to implement the logic for updating the cache statistics. The cache accesses counter needs to be incremented at the beginning of the cache read method. The cache hit counter needs to be incremented in the cache read method only after the requested cache line was found, meaning there is a cache hit. And finally, I'll copy both of these lines to the cache write method because the same logic applies to the cache write method as well. Want to go deeper and learn how caches work? I wrote a short, easy to follow 20 page ebook that covers everything you need to get started with CPU caches, complete with illustrations and examples. The link is in the description. Thank you for supporting the channel. I need two more methods in the cache class get statistics which returns a copy of the cache statistics instance, and reset statistics, so I can measure the hit rate of individual test scenarios without skewing results because of previous tests. Both of these methods are very simple to implement. Get statistics returns a copy of the local cache statistics object, and reset statistics sets all members of the statistics object back to zero. If you recall, we implemented an abstraction of the cache and main memory interfaces by wrapping them with a memory system class. Since this class is the only interface used for accessing the cache and main memory, I need to add both getCacheStatistics and ResetCacheStatistics methods to this class. The getCacheStatistics method calls the cache object's getStatistics, and the ResetCacheStatistics calls the cache object's ResetStatistics method. Now we can access the cache statistics through the memory system class. I've completed implementing everything I need to get the cache hit rate, and now it's time to test. I'll just remove all the testing code from the previous video. Before I write the tests, I want to fill the memory with random information, just so I don't read zeros all the time. Then. I'll write two scenarios, several cycles of sequential reads and several cycles of random reads. The memory fill operation includes 128 write commands where each command writes a random number to a random address up to address 4000. The sequential read cycle will consist of 128 read commands, where each command reads a 32-bit value from memory. This sequential read cycle is done four times, with the statistics reset before each iteration. This will allow me to measure the hit rate for each cycle individually. The expected result is a lower hit rate on the first cycle, which will fill the cache with valid data from main memory, and the following loops should have higher hit rates since the same addresses are already in the cache. The last thing I'll do in this scenario is to print the cache hit rate and scenario number after each scenario. To get the hit rate, I can read the cache statistics through the memory system and call the get hit rate method I implemented at the beginning of the video. I multiply the hit rate, which is a number between 0 and 1, by 100 to get the hit rate as a percent. 
And finally, I'll send the formatted string to see out. OK, let's run it and see the result. This is where the random writes end and the read scenario starts. You can see that most read commands are executed by the cache, and every 64 bytes a cache miss occurs and another 64 bytes are copied from main memory to the cache. This is the meaning of spatial locality. One main memory access prefetches 64 bytes, which allows the next 15 commands to be executed by the cache, preventing the slow access to main memory. The spatial locality principle is what allows the cache hit rate to be 93.75% on the first loop. The second loop is already at 100%. This is because I only read the 512 bytes sequentially, which easily fits into this 16 kilobyte cache. So if I read the same addresses again, they are all already found in the cache. Since nothing changed, the third and fourth loop also produce a 100% hit rate. Here, you can see the actual random data written in main memory. The second test scenario is a random read. I'll just copy the entire first test, and instead of a sequential address, I'll put a random address up to address 2000. But since I don't want to use the same addresses from the previous test, because that will heavily skew the results, I'll start the test from address 1000. In this scenario, I expect the hit rate in the first cycle to be low, since it's randomly selecting addresses which most of them are not found in the cache, and hit rate to increase with each cycle. You can already see that there are many reads from main memory, and this results in a cache hit rate of about 35%, which is not great, to say the least. But, if I check the hit rate of the next cycle, you can see it increased to almost 68%, which is still low, but much better than the first cycle. The third cycle is already at 89%, and the last cycle is at almost 97%. So even with random memory accesses on a limited address range, cache hit rate and as a result performance increases very fast. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe and don't forget to check out my cache memory ebook. I'll see you soon.